R5 is pretty much all on factorization or factorizing polynomials. It's pretty much what it's about, factorization. So let's begin. We begin by a fact. The difference of squares, recall a difference of squares. So jot this on your notes if you'd like. So a difference of squares looks like this. Now here's a fact. If you have something that looks like a squared minus b squared, something that fits this mold, can be factorized as follows. Give me an addition and give me a subtraction. The square root of a squared is a, and that would go here, here. And then the square root of b squared is b, and that goes there and there. So with this fact in mind, let's do a couple of quick factorizations under the difference of squares type, difference of squares. So example, it says factorize, right? So factorize, example A, let's say it's x squared minus 49. This is called a difference of squares because the difference means subtraction. I know the square root of this and I know the square root of this. So the factorization would be Put a plus and put a minus. And then the square root of x squared is x. That goes in the front. The square root of 49, so give me a 7. Done. This would be the solution or the, the response, right? This is the factorization of that. Now, what if you were unsure? What, what if you were, yeah, it's like, oh, I don't know if this is correct or not. What you can do is you can distribute. And that's what we did the other day. Right, if you go x times x, x squared, x times negative seven, and then the inside gives you a seven x, and then in the back you get negative 49. Notice that these center terms eliminate. So you're left with x squared minus 49, which is where you started. See, so that's how you know that your answer was correct. If you distribute or, or, or foil it out, whatever you wanna call it, you get back the original stuff. How about example B? Let's go with 100 minus 1 ninth Q squared. So this is a difference of squares. You can square root both of these objects in this subtraction symbol. So jot down your difference of squares setup. So the square root of 100, so give me a 10. And then the square root of 1 ninth would be 1 third, because 1 third times 1 third is one ninth. And then square root of Q squared would just be Q. So this would be the factorization for that difference of squares. So that's a difference of squares. What about a difference of cubes? That's a different story. So jot this down. Difference, this is a difference of cubes. A difference of cubes looks like this. A cubed minus B cubed. So when something fits this mold, here is how you factorize it. Open up a parentheses and then a larger set of parentheses. And then here's what you do. You, you keep the, the, the same sign. So that's a minus, so put a minus there. Okay, so there's a minus there. And then over here, it would be positive, positive. Now I'll show you how to fill in all these blanks. In the first one, it would be A there and B there. Now in the back, here in the front, you'd go a squared. In the middle, it would be a times b. And then in the back, it would be b squared. So let me do an example right here underneath. Let's switch colors. So what if you have something that says this? What if you have, let's say, x cubed minus 343? This is a difference of cubes. So do your setup, minus and plus, right? And now fill in the binomial, fill in the little guy, and then we can build the big guy. So in here, what goes there? A, which is the cube root of this. So what's the cube root of x cubed? Would literally just be x. Now here is B, the cube root of B cubed. Well, what's the cube root of 343? 
if you, if you work out the numbers, it would be seven because seven times seven times seven is 343. So once this is filled out, we can build the trinomial from the binomial. Watch what this says. This is gonna be a square. So whatever this is, square it and put it there. So if I take X and square it, it'll literally say X squared. In the middle, you have to go A times B. Well, X and seven are my A and B. So this would just stay seven X. And then in the back, it's B squared, the square of this object. Well, the square of seven is 49. And that's how we get our final answer. Right, you would literally just turn that in. So that's a difference of cubes. The one that immediately follows is the sum of cubes. So instead of difference, this would be the sum of cubes. Right? So a sum of cubes. And here's what a sum of cubes look like. It looks like this, a cubed plus b cubed. So if something looks like a cubed plus b cubed, it would look like this. It would go equals a two-piece and a three-piece, addition, subtraction, addition. It would be A and B, and then it would be A squared, A, B. Pretty much like the other one. Pretty much like the difference of cubes is just with this one being switched and this one being switched. It's pretty much the same thing, though. But nonetheless, let's knock out a quick example. What if I have something like, let's say, 64W cubed plus, how about one? Let's try this one here. This is a sum of cubes. Set up your template. Okay, there is my template there. And now let's fill stuff in. So in the front, cube root 64W cube. The cube root of that whole thing would be 4W because 4W times 4W times 4W is 64W cube. Cube root one, it would just stay one. And now that this is filled out, you can fill out the trinomial. So take 4w and square it to go here. Well, 4w squared is 4w times itself, which is 16w squared. In the middle, go 4w times one, stays 4w. And then in the back, you square b. Whatever b is, you square it in the back. So if you take one and square it, it stays one. And that would be the factorization. Up next, we have factorizing by groups. So this is group factorization. So example, let's just call this group factorize. And let's do a couple problems. Example A. Let me just write this down here. Let's say you have 15x squared minus 20x plus 6x minus eight, here we go. So the goal here is to group factorize. So whenever they say group factorize, you're probably gonna have four pieces. And then what you do is you pair them. Look only at the first pair, okay? Look only there, ignore all these, guys. forget about them. Forget about all that for now, Let's just ignore them. Look only here. Now, looking here at these guys, what is the greatest common factor? What is the biggest number? that can divide into 15 and 20. That number would be three. But is there something that can join the three outside? You see, this has x squared, this has x. They can both lose an x. And if I do that, if I take out three x, then I say three. I meant, of course, to say five, silly rabbit. So if I take out a five x, what would be left in here? Right? Well, what goes in here? So that 5x times this gives me back the original. Well, can we agree that this would have to be 3x minus 4? Because if you distribute, you get back what you had before. Okay, so that's looking at the first pair. Look at the latter pair. Look at the ones in the back. So ignore all of this for now. Look only here. What's the greatest common factor between 6x and 8? What can you take out of 6 and 8? Well, can we agree that it would be 2? And only two. No x's come out because the eight doesn't have any x's. And what are we left with inside if you take two outside through division? The six x would become three x. The negative eight would become a negative four. And you know that you're on the right track when these match.
See that? They're exactly the same thing. And that's how you know that you're on the right track. Now, here's how you finish this. What you do is you remove. If I remove 3x minus 4 from this first cluster and this whole cluster, what would I be left with inside? Right? If I remove 3x minus 4 from this and that, I would be left with a 5x. I would be left with a 5x and then the plus two, that's what you would be left with. So now let's write down the final answer, like nice and pretty. I'll put it up here. It would be 3x minus 4 times 5x plus 2. Box that in. That would be the group factorization. Right? You pair them off. You pair them off. So let me try one more before we go on to the last concept. If you think you got this, you can just skip through this part. But let me do one more group factorization. 18y squared plus 15y minus 6y minus 5. So four terms, group factorize. Look at the first pair. What's the greatest common factor from these guys? It would be 3y. I factor out 3y to the front, leaving you inside with 6y plus 5, it looks like. Now look at the stuff in the back. What comes out of negative 6y and negative 5? It looks like nothing comes out from them. But you can always take out a 1. And because this symbol is subtraction, because this is a negative, I'm going to take out a negative. So if I remove away a negative 1 through division from these guys, I would be left with 6y plus 5 inside. All right? Because if you distribute this, you get back what you had before. And furthermore, this perfectly matches this. So you know you're on the right track. So your final answer would be a 6y plus 5 times 3y minus 1. Let's check that out. Done. Students, are, are they like group factoring because you can just pair them off. It's not, it's not like the hardest you know, process. You know, it's a pretty friendly process. But this last example is a little different. So example, factorize the trinomial. So let's finish our video with this concept here. Trinomial. Looks like this. 8x squared plus 2x minus 15. So let's just finish with this example here. So here the difference is here we have three terms instead of four. So the recommendation to students is instead of three terms, I say you break it up into four. Because if you have four terms, you could go group factorizing and like we did a moment ago, and then we're done. So to do that, I draw something that you've perhaps seen before, this symbol here, yes? And then what you do for the number at the top, you have to go this times this. You take the front number A and you times it with the back number C. So if I go eight times negative 15, that's negative 120, right? That's negative 120. And that's the number that you put in the top. So upstairs, put a negative 120 right there. Negative 120. That goes in the top. Now in the bottom, the number that you put in the bottom is always the center coefficient. In this case, just two. Always that middle piece, just drag it and drop it there. And then recall how this works. You have to find two numbers here and here Find two mysterious numbers there and there, such that if you multiply those numbers, you get negative 120. But if you add those same two mysterious numbers, you get back two. So if you experiment with the situation with the numbers, you should get back a positive 12 and a negative 10. Because if you multiply these numbers, if you times this with this, it's negative 120. But if you add them, 12 minus 10 is positive two. And that's how you get these two center numbers, okay? So now let's go back to the main problem. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the center piece and break it up into two pieces with these guys. So look, we'll have eight X squared. And then instead of positive two, we'll use the 12 X and the minus 10 X. Everything else stays the same, see that? Everybody else stayed the same. That stayed the same, this stayed the same. The middle piece 2x has been broken up, but it's still there. You can see the 2x right there. But the point of this is now we have four terms. And when you have four terms, you can group factorize like we did twice a moment ago. 
So it looks like here we take out a 4x, leaving you with 2x plus 3. In the back, you can take out a negative 5, it looks like, leaving us with 2x plus 3. The parentheses clearly match. And so you can write down your final answer here in blue. The final answer being 2x plus 3 times 4x minus 5. So that's an example of trinomial factorization. You turn three pieces into four pieces, and then you go group factorization.